Ooh, alarm clock. So, what I can see anyway, this is the last scene of the bad ending. So, instant replay. I'm gonna save real quick, because this is also where you're supposed to be able to make a choice to get back onto the good ending, which I'll probably show in another video, because I have to do it to 100% the game. Anyway, the morning alarm sounds, and I roll over, switching it off. My eyes open blearily to stare at the ceiling. What am I going to do? Do I get out of the bed, go down to the track, and pretend that nothing happened? Will Emmy even show up after last evening's events? I doubt it. Even supposing that she did, what would I do then? Get over this fight just to dance the same routine and next time something's bothering her? I know that I spoke hastily last evening, especially trying to use her father as leverage. But was anything I said really off the mark? She won't let me in, ever, and she'll be forced to suffer alone. Nothing I do, nothing I say is going to change that. She won't change, and she's already decided to keep me at arm's length. Can I really bring myself to go down there and see her, knowing that I'm never going to get past where I am now? Going back to sleep then? No, I decide I really can't. Not today. I roll over and go back to sleep. She probably won't eat. She probably won't be there anyway. Oh no, what if she's showing up waiting for us and we don't show? Similar mental conversation repeats itself when it comes time to go to lunch. I eat in the cafeteria, alone. I don't want to see her. The very thought makes me feel ill. Feel ill. That night, I go for a run. I'm solo for the first time since Emmy got sick after the track meet. Skip seeing the nurse, just in case he asked about Emmy. I don't want to talk about her, either. Next day, I do the same thing. Alarm, off, stay in bed, eat alone, run alone. To fill the time that I would usually be spending with Emmy, I start reading more. It works surprisingly well until I find myself ducking into a restroom because I see her walking down the hall in between classes. If she noticed me, she didn't show it, even though I don't suppose she ever shows anything. Certainly not to the girls from her class I see talking cheerfully to her. Or to her fellow track members. Especially not to me. Alarm off. Stay in bed. Mateo and I had a lengthy talk about the possibility that string theory is plausible. I don't buy it, myself. More than four dimensions I can buy, but a bunch of vibrating strings at the subatomic level? That's asking a bit much. <clears throat> Looks like I'm not the only one to think this way, too. Apparently it's not really as strong a theory as it once was. Mateo says that's just because nobody's found the right way of looking at the data yet. Eat alone. The rooftop is deserted today. I briefly wonder where Emmy and Rin are, but shrug off the question. The important thing is that they aren't here, so I won't have to talk to them. Since I have nobody to talk to, I bring a book with me to read. The weather's nicer if getting a little hot. Hopefully it'll be cooler in the evening. A cool breeze seems to back up my theory. Run alone. It is, in fact, cooler at the track than sign of Emmy, which is exactly the sort of thing I'm going for. I stretch out and start on my usual run, trying hard to ignore the lack of a running partner in front of me. Oh god, this just seems like it's going <laughs> to not go well. Finding my thoughts drifting damnably to that girlish laugh and corrigible grin. Those wide and friendly eyes, her incredibly toned body. Uh, one second. I'm looking up what incorrigible means. I like, I know the word, but I didn't know how to, uh, what it meant. Not, uh, not able to be corrected, improved, or reformed. And it's about a person or their tendencies. I increase the pace to clear my head, chew up the distance between me and the turns, find the speed that makes me think only of my legs and how much they burn. I glance at my watch as I round the final turn, noting that my time's gotten faster. My heart seems a little squirrely tonight, so I'll give myself a few extra cooldown laps just to be safe. No reason to bring this to the nurse's attention. I'll be fine. A rather Emmy-ish thought to have, I'll admit. I hope that eventually I'll stop thinking about her so much. With time, maybe. Probably. I finish another book before going to bed that night. I'll have to stop by the library tomorrow. Oop, alarm clock. I don't know why I keep the early alarm on anymore, but it wakes me up the next morning just the same. I still turn it off and go back to sleep. That afternoon, as I get ready to head to the cafeteria for another solo lunch, I've got a new book about a couple of con men in ancient Persia that I'm pretty excited about reading. I'm suddenly cornered by Misha and, huh, I guess just Misha. Off to eat alone again, he John? 
We've noticed, you know. We? Uh-huh. Shichan and I noticed you've been spending more time alone. I noticed that you've been spending more time alone. She wanted me to find out why, so I told her I'd ask you. That's why she didn't ask me herself. She would have, but she wanted to get a head start on some paperwork. There's a lot of it since we're coming up on the end of the term, you know. I just had an interest in my well-being, anyway. Ah, uh, Shichan said, It is the duty of the student council to keep track of the emotional health of its students. To allow a cons constituent to spiral into depression unchecked would be an unforgivable failure in this council's duties. Well, that's easy then. I'm not depressed. But you're eating alone and nobody's seen you and Amy together at all. Something happened, didn't it, Heechan? Misha's voice takes on a slightly sterner tone, but somehow she keeps a familiar lilt at the end of her sentences. I purse my lips, uncertain about how to respond. So giving in and letting Misha know is what takes us back to the good ending? Downplaying the issue is what keeps us on the bad ending, so since I'm going for the bad ending right now, I'm going for downplay the issue. I'm not sure I like the idea of airing private matters to the student council. Nothing major. Hey Chan, lying's a terrible thing to do. She's not buying it. Okay, give her something, but not too much. We had a disagreement and haven't resolved it yet. Oh, why not? Because look, I don't need to talk about this, okay? It's not a big deal, okay? I'm fine. And Emmy, is she fine too, Heechan? Misha's voice is taking on a decidedly serious edge. This is ridiculous. I don't know, okay? I haven't asked. Things are complicated right now. What kind of man are you? Things get a little rough and you're going to hide from them? Misha's silent retort catches me completely off guard. Shichan would call it a cowardly act, and she'd be right too. You two were close, happy together, and you're just going to roll over and die without a fight? You should be willing to fight for your girlfriend, Hisao. It seems that Misha is channeling Shizune at the moment. It wouldn't surprise me to find out that Shizune gave her a script to follow based on my answer. Misha points an imperious arm at the classroom door. Now you get out of the classroom and patch things up. Um, we've still got afternoon classes. It doesn't seem to dissuade Misha. Then after class, you better do it, Heechan. It's important that you don't leave things like this. Why? Misha regards me as one who would regard an animal's droppings. Don't you care about her? Didn't you care about her, Sal? That's important, isn't it? Huh, she's right. I did. I do care about her. Don't I? Okay, I'll see her after class. Great, I'll let Shichan know you're okay, then. The wilt returns. I guess that means that Misha isn't angry at me anymore. She waves and disappears down the hallway. I eat my lunch. And I eat my lunch. Did, did I read that right? Oh. She waves and disappears down the hallway, and I eat my lunch. Okay. While afternoon classes draw to a close, I prepare myself for the task ahead. I have to see Emmy. Misha was at least correct about that. Leaving the questions of Emmy and me an open issue won't work. At the very least, I need to apologize for what I said. I can see her going to her room to find her, but she's probably still at the track. The steps out of the main building and down the path to the track make me feel like a doomed man. I have a twisting, horrible feeling in my gut that this is all going to go horribly wrong. That I'm not going to accomplish anything. Except for maybe driving the final nail in the coffin of whatever it was Emmy and I had. There she is, just as expected, running laps around the track after everyone else has gone to shower and dinner. I don't wave or even make my presence known, I just sit down in the bleachers and watch her run her laps. It takes a few trips around the track before she notices me, after which she skids to a stop, eyes wide in surprise. Surprise, I quickly mask my anger, which in turn fades behind a mask that I already know is impenetrable. What are you doing here? Not quite the response I'd hoped for, but at this point I don't have much of a choice. I wanted to apologize for what I said the other day. The other day? She laughs a curt exclamation of disbelief. It's been almost a week, Hassel. Yeah, well, better late than never, right? Shadow of the truth. And it crosses her arms and stares at me coolly, as if sizing me up. Finally, she nods. Hmph, <laughs> I suppose you're right. Water under the bridge, then. I forgive you. Is that all? Her almost impatient question catches me so off guard that she's halfway down the track before I think to shout after her. No, wait. And he stops, turns, walks back to me, breathing a little heavily and looking annoyed at my interruption. What? 
Okay, I need to make this right somehow. I have to know where I stand. Maybe patch things up. Can you at least sit down? I think we're okay talking here. Fine, sure. Look about us. I apologize, trying to think of a good way to phrase what I'm about to say. But we're welcome watching the passion play for giving me another chance. Andy's already spoken. There's no more us, Hassal. Why not? We're just not right for each other. She delivers this outrageous statement without even looking in my eyes. I don't believe you. We're great with one another. Says the guy apologizing for getting thrown out of my house last week. It was a fight. I said something really incredibly stupid and apologized for it. And how many times have we already discussed the problem that started the fight? How many times had I told you that there was a set boundary that I wouldn't cross? And how many times did you keep trying to cross it? Because your boundary was stupid. Emmy rolls her eyes, folds her arms across her chest, and cocks her head to the side. Yeah, this ain't being fixed. Do you see this, Hassel? This is why we're not right for one another. Her voice softens a little, and she reaches out to stroke my cheek. You're a good guy, but we're not going to work. What a horrible, what a horrible lurching feeling. I realize that she's been practicing this maybe every day since I left her house. Even the cheek stroke seems rehearsed, like something out of a movie. She never intended to give me another chance. Hell, she probably would have been fine with never seeing me again. So that's it, then. Nothing else to say, but gee, it was fun while it lasted, but so long. This actually seems to amuse Emmy far more than I wanted it to. She gives a rather morbid-sounding chuckle. That's how I've lived my life, Asal. You should know that by now. And it was fun. A sad smile. She shivers slightly, and the smile vanishes. But it's over now. It's for the best. Huh. I want to yell, to scream at her, make her see reason, that this is stupid. The whole act. That she's just afraid of me, afraid of b what being close to someone means. I wanted to tell her that I love her and that I can't just give up on her at the drop of a hat. Except, there's no point. She's made up her mind. We're done. Fine. Emmy nods, satisfied. I want to hit something. Good. She brightens with a false cheeriness. See you around, Hisao. No, you won't. You won't even try. She shrugs as if to say, have it your way, and turns her back on me once more, quickly accelerating around the curve of the track. I feel numb. This is it. The end of the road for us. Whatever that was. Closure, at least. And he rounds the track again without sparing me a second glance. She's running much faster now, and I can't help but think of that first run together. I ran to catch you, to try to prove I wasn't as weak as I knew I was, but it ended badly for me, didn't it? And now you're off running too fast for me again, and I have the choice to run after you again. But I won't. Not this time. You'd never let me catch you. I don't even notice walking away from the track, or walking to my room, or pulling out a book out of... I don't even notice walking away from the track, or walking into my room, or pulling a book out of my bag to read. Just before bed, I, I reset my alarm, and we and I have had our final encounter. And that's it. We don't speak again after that. So, does it give an ending screen? Tall was it? Oh, credits. I'm gonna be quiet then. That was uh, way shorter than I thought the credits were going to be, but like I said, that ending was sad, but what do you expect from the bad ending? Uh, I guess next time I'll try to do one of the good endings. I'll probably do the one that branched off from my last save, then I'll do the full good ending where I never start, so I'd have to go back to where I didn't start the bad ending. Anyway, this is a great game, and I 
Honestly, can't wait to see the rest of the endings. Uh, I'm going to look at the extras because the cinema? No, not the cinema. Library. This is where um, it shows the progress I have. See, I didn't do everything here. And with Emmy, I'm missing one, two, three, four, five scenes. And I'm 25% done, it says. Anyway, that's, well, obviously the end, because that's the end of that route. Until I go to the uh, good route next. Thank <laughs> you.